Hello everyone, this is Frank DeMore from the End Times Research Ministry. I was away on a special assignment for the past three weeks and I wasn't able to make some videos that I normally make. And one set of videos that I normally make has to do with the birds, the fish, and the animals dying. And it's been some time since I did that video and I wanted to present this information to you because a lot has happened in these past three weeks and every time that I present a post like this I try to do my best to make sure that I get the warning out for people to pay attention to what they're seeing in the news because we're seeing an exorbitant amount of reports about mass deaths of birds fish and animals that are dying now I do have all of this information recorded in my free prophecy book that you can Go to my website, you see it there on the screen. Just go to that website and there'll be a link there for my book. Click the link, you can get the book today for free and it'll have all this information in it. Now for anyone who doesn't know about Bible prophecy or very little about Bible prophecy, I always give you the word of the Lord so that you can see what the Lord has warned us that was going to take place before it actually took place. One of those cases you find in Hosea chapter 4, verse 3. Therefore shall the land mourn, and every one that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of heaven. Yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. So you have the birds, the fish, and the animals that are going to die off in mass numbers in the last days. And of course, that isn't the only place that the Lord warned us that these things in prophecy were going to take place. There's another one in Revelation chapter 16, verse 3. Take a look at this. The second angel poured out his bowl on the sea, and it turned into blood like that of a dead man, and everything living in this sea died. Just one important fact here. It says blood like. It doesn't say that it actually turned into blood but blood-like. So whatever is going to happen when you're looking out into the seas and the oceans, you're going to see the color red. And you're going to see in the reports that I give to you, especially in my book because there's a lot of them. If you read my book, you're going to see what is called the red tide. And these are blooms. And a lot has to do with the temperature of the sun. But we do know that when this blood-like substance comes it's going to kill off all of the fish because it says every living thing in the sea died now we do know that we're in this process it's been some time and it's getting worse and worse i'm going to show you the proof of that but we are in the birth pangs as jesus talked about in mark 13 8. so what i wanted to show you is in 2014 there were 651 reports of mass deaths of birds, fish, and animals. This year, in the year 2015, already there has been 700 reports. You talk about birth pangs. That's 49 more than 2014. And we just started October. So you still have October, November, December. So there's no question that we're seeing an increase and in, that would be an indication of the birth pangs. Now, the deaths have been reported in 89 different countries. They're not happening in just isolated countries for one reason or another, but there's a large gamut of places around the world where these things are taking place. Now, I didn't mention the sun and I'm gonna connect the dots for you. Revelation chapter seven, verse 16 gives us a really clear picture of what's going to happen in the tribulation period when it comes to the sun because the lord jesus in the new testament obviously warned that there was going to be the signs in the sun the moon and the stars now revelation 7 16 for example the lord said never again will they hunger never again will they thirst the sun will not beat upon them nor any scorching heat so the fact of the matter is, during the tribulation period, people are going to be extremely hungry. There's going to be massive droughts because of the intensity of the sun. Uh, there's never going to be this 
issue where you can get a drink of water anytime you want. There's going to be massive thirst during the tribulation period. And of course, the sun is going to be beating, scorching on this earth, scorching the people on this earth. So as you can see from the Revelation, it's not going to be a pretty time. In those verses in chapter 7 and verses 8 in chapter 16, really describe a period of intense heat and scorching of this planet like we've never seen before. And it does have an effect. One of the effects that this intense heat, this drought situation in many parts of the world that we're experiencing right now, has to do with the water being heated up, but not only by the sun, but by a system called El Nino, which warms the water, the ocean water. And what it does, it causes these ocean blooms or red tides in many places around the world. And when these red tides come in, the byproduct of the red tides and the warming of the water we see that there is a continued decline or a lack of oxygen in the water that causes a lot of cases, a lot of reports, where they're reporting that the mass die-off of fish is because of the lack of oxygen in the water because the waters are heating up. Now, as we go through the new video that I'm showing you today and all the reports, I just want to mention a few things. Number one, a lot of the reports that you're going to be seeing are called a mystery. And I'm going to have drop downs to show you it's a mystery. And officials can't figure out what the heck is going on. But if they were to read the Bible, they would understand that the things are taking place. Although it may seem, in some cases, natural, the number, the sheer number of the incidents of mass deaths of not just the fish, but birds and animals. This has caused an alarm bell to go off in many places around the world. So you're going to see drop downs of mysteries as well. Now, my last presentation that I gave, I ended up giving you an update from September the 6th through September the 7th. So what I'm going to do now is continue on from where I left off. Now, some of the videos that you will see, they'll have sound in them. Some of them won't. So, please don't email me, say, Frank, that all of a sudden the sound went off. I just want to warn you that some of them don't have sounds. But what you will see is drop-downs that will highlight the most important part of the article that I want you to see. But the bottom line is this. Through all of these articles, whether it be a mystery or how the fish are dying, whatever, the bottom line is this, it is happening, just like the Lord's prophet told us it was going to happen. And of course, it's not going to reach its max until this world is pushed into the tribulation period where we see all of these prophecies come completely to fulfillment. All right, so with that, let's begin looking at the new information since my last update. September 13, 2015, news from Alaska. September the 6, 2015, news from Alaska. Hi, I'm Ron Vicker. I'm 16 years old at the Service High School. I'm standing here in Jacklaw Creek, close to Seldovia. Uh, this creek, every year, my family and I come up here and we fish for pink salmon. We've got a camera pretty close to here. And if you look around me, there's not a lot of pink salmon this year that are going to be good to catch. This year we have no snow, no snow melt, so the fish are coming, coming up, coming up, being brought in by the tide. They're getting up to here, and as soon as the tide comes out, there's no water for them to sit in, so they're just dying right here, and they're not even spawning. They're not getting up to their normal spawning ground, so they're just getting to the lowest points where there's any water, and they're just dying there. So this is the farthest up any of them got. This is the uppermost pool, and... All these fish here are still alive and they haven't spawned out yet. Take a look at how like stuck out their bellies are and they all still have the mess of the eggs still in them. That's not yet. 
So this is really concerning because if this happens next year and keeps happening, it could be the end of this river as a subsistence river for us because there just won't be any fish so we'll make up the river to spawn. And this river is uh, really important to the people in Soldovia and the people who uh, come and fish around here for uh, getting food for their family and for the women. So. September the 9th in the United States. New at 6, more than 150,000 rainbow trout die in just a matter of minutes at the Nimbus Fish Hatchery in Rancho Cordova. We're really in crisis mode. We're working as hard as we can with everybody that we can to try to get it fixed. State and federal officials blame it on mystery goo released from the Nimbus Dam. So how does this affect California's fishing industry? CBS 13's Ron Jones is getting answers. Federal and state officials tell CBS 13 it was the mystery gunk that went through these pipes that killed tens of thousands of rainbow trout. It's not good. More bad news for a hatchery already hit hard by our devastating drought. To the moment, we've lost about 155,000 rainbow trout. State Fish and Wildlife officials say scores of trout died after an unidentified substance was released from the Nimbus Dam. Well, it's certainly devastating to our hatchery operations. Apparently Tuesday evening, Federal Bureau of Reclamation crews were doing maintenance on pipes at the Nimbus Dam when one of the pipes released a goon-type substance that eventually flowed into the hatchery. Ultimately, the water that came out into the hatchery here clogged up our chilling plant and our UV filters and our whole filtering system for these fish, which in turn heated the water and glued to the water and killed the fish. What is that mystery gunk? I can't answer that. Federal officials are still analyzing the substance and wonder if it's drought related. I don't know if it's, if it's drought related and the water is warmer than it normally is, allowing the algae to grow in a way that we didn't anticipate. Uh, it could be any number of things. Fit This is KY3 News, September 10th, 2015. Hundreds of fish die in pond near Lincoln. This is, like I said, this has been going on for about three days. Nathan Manning was feeding his cows one day when he noticed dead fish floating in his pond. I was checking in, but I seen all the fish on the top of the water, and some of them were dead, and there were some still kind of swimming on their side and stuff. Oh, there's thousands. He contacted the Department of Natural Resources and the Department of Conservation, but he says... They couldn't tell him what killed the fish. They said that they didn't really know, you know, what caused it for sure. They thought it was low oxygen level. But I don't think they test for a lot of different things. Nathan's pond is about six or seven acres big and was once home to hundreds of fish. But now most of those fish, both big and small,
for Dan. There's bluegill and catfish and bass. Found found a lot of them, and then I found some goldfish too. Somebody must have turned them in there at one point, but they were dead as well. Now Nathan and his family are hoping they can get some answers and save some of this fish. In Benton County, Dustin Hodges, KY3 News. And just like so many other reports, this too is a mystery. filed September 11th, 2015. A mystery is unfolding in Wasaga Beach after hundreds of strange-looking fish washed up on shore. As Roger Klein tells us, it's not only the type of fish, but the number of them found there that has some people wondering. Rick Baldry operates a tackle shop in Collingwood, where one of his customers asked, if you'd ever seen a fish like this, Baldry says, it's a type of eel. And hundreds of them washed ashore in Wasaga Beach recently, near the mouth of the Nottawasaga River. The eels have a pointed nose and spots on the tail. Uh, what in the world is this? I've never seen this before. That's something completely foreign to my eyes and probably to everyone else's eyes around here. The eels have not yet been positively identified, but they appear to be a type of peacock eel that are sometimes grown in aquariums. They are native to the tropical waters of Thailand, Burma, and India, they can grow to be about 40 centimeters long. The Ontario Federation of Hunters and Anglers Invasive Species Hotline has been notified. And yesterday, frozen samples of the eels were handed over to the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry for detailed examination. Officials there say this is the first known report of peacock eels in the Great Lakes. Baldry is concerned that somebody released the eels into the wild. And considering the numbers, they must have reproduced too. Only one or two, we think, okay, maybe somebody dumped them. But two or three hundred of them? Uh oh. How did they get here? And that's the big concern. How did they get here? According to the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry, the eels are not considered an invasive species because they are a tropical fish and they can't survive a winter here to establish a population. Large Klein, CTV News, Wasaga Beach. September the 14th, 2015, Red Tide blamed for dead fish at Peck Reed Channel. And that's not the only water issue that we're dealing with today. We have an interesting piece of video that really gives us just a better picture of the impact of Red Tide. Now take a look at this. Glenn Miller shot this footage with a drone out at Peck Reed Channel. And from this aerial perspective, you can see the hundreds of dead fish in the water there. Texas Parks and Wildlife monitoring this red tide event, which was confirmed by researchers with the UT Marine Science Institute, and they were first alerted when the toxins released by the algal bloom started irritating their eyes and noses. And samples collected yesterday by Texas Parks and Wildlife at Padre Island National Seashore found high levels of the algae bloom in the southern shores of the Packery Channel, Horace Caldwell Pier in Port Aransas, Bob Hall Pier at the northern border of Padre Island National Seashore.
Here we have the USA, September the 22nd, 2015, California Reservoir drains killing thousands of fish. Welcome back. Thousands of fish are dead after a man-made lake in Northern California emptied during the weekend of September 12th. A Mountain Meadows Reservoir is also known as Walker Lake. It's about two hours north of Reno near Lake Almanor and the town of Westwood. Paul Nelson looked into why the lake went dry and spoke with the residents company that operates the reservoir's dam. Walker Lake's a popular fishing hole just west of Susanville, but as you can see, there's no fish left. Residents say the lake drained overnight, and they want answers. Everywhere that you see that's wet, there was water. Eddie Bauer has lived near this lake his entire life, and this is the first time he's ever seen it run dry. Today, there's nothing but a muddy mess and countless dead fish. It's, it's amazing how many people have come out to, to see the destruction. You know, like my wife, for instance, you know, she's holding her nose. She can't even stand the smell. Pacific Gas and Electric Company owns the rights to the water and use it for hydroelectric power. The company spokesperson says it hasn't used it since March. That's when they cut water flows out of the reservoir to the minimum requirement. It's a situation that we work hard to avoid, but the reality is that we're in a very serious drought. They're also concerned for the fish that were downstream. Moreno says the drought is the main culprit, with less snow runoff ending up in the lake. The situation we worked hard to avoid, but water conditions this year are difficult. We know that drying up the reservoir disappoints area residents. But residents say this could have been avoided. Creeks that normally feed into the lake are flowing, but many are diverted to ranch land before it makes it to the lake. So water was flowing out, but none was coming in. They had plenty of time to do something about this. Years. Then everybody gets in a fuss when it's too late. We've lost our fish. Bauer says people were fishing on the lake last Saturday, and it drained like a bathtub overnight. He believes there should have been at least two weeks of water left, and that would have given them enough time to relocate the fish. It just makes me feel like they really didn't want to do a fish rescue, and that it was easier just to open that sucker up Saturday night. But PG&E officials say nobody opened the dam up, and the water simply ran out. So we want people to know that we take environmental stewardship very seriously. It's one of our company's top priorities. Bauer says this lake isn't just an important place for the fish, but also the birds that eat the fish, and it's also a popular place for duck hunters. Now, Bauer says he expects this lake to be full again by next spring, but he's not sure how they'll replace the fish. Covering the story, Paul Nelson, Channel 2. This next report comes out of Vietnam on September the 24th. Pollution alarm sounded as sea cucumbers stranded on Vietnam's Phu Quoc Island. Thousands of sea cucumbers were washed up on the beach of Phu Quoc Island over the weekend, raising concern amongst experts that the ecosystem of the famous Vietnamese tourist destination is at risk of severe pollution. On Saturday, locals and visitors were surprised to see thousands of the marine animals pushed ashore and fill the beach on Phu Quoc, a district administered by the Mekong Delta province of Kianyang. With sea cucumbers essentially traded as valuable seafood, local residents immediately rushed to collect the creatures for sale, even though they were all dead. The echinoderms fetch around 70,000 Vietnam dong, $3.13 a kilogram. The operators of nearby hotels in the meantime had to have their employees clear the dead sea cucumbers around their premises to prevent pollution. There could be as much as two tons of sea cucumbers stranded on Phu Quoc when Van Lom, a local fisherman, told to each newspaper on Sunday. Lom said his family members collected around 100 kilograms of the animals. There used to be an abundant supply of sea cucumbers along the Phu Quoc beach, but fishermen now have to sail far offshore to find the creatures due to excessive catching, according to Wen Van Tong, a seasoned diver. This is the first time I have seen sea cucumbers washed ashore by waves, he said. Most senior citizens on the island said the phenomenon was unprecedented and unusual, whereas experts and scientists pointed the finger at the increasingly polluted ecosystem of Phu Quoc. Sea cucumbers are found in nearly every marine environment, but are most diverse on tropical shallow water coral reefs, according to biologists.
There's another report, USA, September the 26th, 2015. Thousands of fish dead as California Reservoir disappears overnight. This comes with a video to show you the thousands of fish who have been gasping for air to live. According to the article, it says the California Department of Fish and Wildlife confirmed that somewhere between hundreds and thousands of fish died when a northern state reservoir apparently ran dry in the span of a single night. And as you already saw, there are other places that we see whole bodies of water disappearing overnight and a lot of the authorities are in, they're baffled as to how this happened. And you're going to see a lot more of this, especially as we see the intensity of the sun as prophesied by Jesus in the book of Revelation. Now we're moving to Greece, September the 26th, 2015. Hundreds of dead fish and crabs in a river that were found dead. And you'll see that the reason was environmental reasons. Brazil, September the 27th, 2015. You see a common theme in a lot of these reports is another mystery. Turkey, September the 27th, 2015. There's a report that came out in September the 30th of 2015 by the BBC, Three Mile Water Investigation into River Fish Kill. 20 years ago, the Three Mile Water was a dumping ground, a heavily polluted water course sustaining no life. Two decades of work by conservationists has turned it into a top quality spawning ground. But it was those juveniles, 600 salmon and trout anglers say, that were wiped out. The salmon. Well, doing our best to try and conserve the species, and uh, you know it's really bad when you get a knockback like this. Uh, you know, and it's, it's particularly bad in such a small system. But uh, yeah, it, it will affect our angling club because I mean, you know, they are fish we could have fished for. Although that's not our main priority at, at, at the minute. With this is a mainly a conservation project. Thousands of pounds have been spent breathing new life into the Three Mile Water. Pools and spawning beds have been created by volunteers who manage this river for the good of the local community. More work like that will now be needed. As well as helping the river to recover, the big focus now will be trying to find out what caused the pollution. But in these kind of city rivers, that's not as simple as you might imagine. There are lots of pipes running into this river that don't all come from a single source. You have pipes running into pipes, and that makes tracking the culprit quite difficult. The Environment Agency has taken samples. It says there was no obvious sign of industrial, domestic or farm effluent. 
conservationists say it's not the first time the Three Mile Water has been hit by this kind of mystery kill. Conor McCauley, BBC Newsline, Newton Abbey. Now we're moving to Saudi Arabia on September the 30th. Thousands of fish wash ashore in Saudi Arabia. These thousands of fish that are dead here, it's becoming a common occurrence as you can see. And people should take the warnings from our Lord very, very seriously because if you see thousands and thousands of fish dying in many, many countries, it should be alarming. Now, once again, we're going to turn attention to the USA, September the 30th of 2015. Endangered fur seals dying on the California coast. 84 seals have been found stranded or dead on California's coast so far this year. Eight times, look at that, eight times more than normal scientists said and this is a direct indication of the lord's warning about the birth pangs of the last days now turkey september the 30th 2015. again mysterious fish mortalities Here we are, an uh, article from ABC Sydney, this is Australia, September the 30th of 2015. We see thousands of these jellyfish that washed up ashore. You'll see in the red the reason. Water has been quite warm. Again, a common occurrence in many parts around the world. Nigeria, September the 30th, 2015. They have a new outbreak of bird flu spreads to 21 states. As you can see from the drop down. According to the report, you had 1,579,191 birds have been depopulated so far. When I mean depopulated, they mean killed. That is a lot of birds. Now Tanzania, October the 1st, Take a close look at this picture here because you have hundreds of wildebeest were somehow killed, creating a scene of biblical devastation with no known cause. So again, another mystery, this time not involving the fish, but actually thousands of these wildebeest. The British Virgin Islands. October the 2nd, 2015. Once again, a sharp drop in oxygen levels in the water has killed hundreds of fish. Ireland, October the 4th. Another one of these strange phenomenon. 
and this time millions of fish perishing. Mexico, October the 2nd, 2015. As I said in the beginning of my presentation here, because of the red tides, the algae blooms, many, many fish are dying. And this is, again, another one of those examples of the red tide. In this case, the red tide kills three tons of fish. October the 5th, 2015. Department of Environmental Protection investigating fish kill in Jacksonville Beach. Dot com. Tonight, Action News Jackson is investigating what caused this fish kill in Jack's Beach. New at 5, Action News Jack's Deanna, Deanna Baneshi is live at Marsh Landing. And Deanna, neighbors say the dead fish surfaced over the weekend, and they want to know why. And they sent me these pictures of the dead fish that were found right along the edge of this pond here. They say there were so many dead fish, a cleanup company was called out. Neighbors say this is the site they woke up to over the weekend. A sea of dead fish at the palms at Marsh Landing in Jack's Beach. It's just uh, super stench. Jeremy Moshek says he and other neighbors became concerned when the number of fish appearing at the water surface became excessive. And then the bird showed up and it's a mess. While we were talking with Moshek, we saw this company come out to scoop up the dead fish. I spoke with the HOA president who tells me the Department of Environmental Protection was out here taking meter readings in the ponds. The DEP tells me the preliminary investigation shows there weren't high enough oxygen levels in the water for the fish to survive. They say they should have a better idea of exactly what happened over the next few days. Vietnam, October the 4th of 2015. Once again, this time involving lobsters, but another mystery. Indonesia, October the 6th, 2015. Italy, same date, the 6th. More dead birds and another mystery. Taiwan, same date, October the 6th. Nine thousand five hundred and twenty two birds die because of the avian flu. This news is out of Oklahoma, October the 5th, 2015. Biologist wastewater kills thousands of Delaware County fish. The Oklahoma Wildlife Department is investigating after thousands of fish were found dead in a Delaware County creek. Only on six, biologists tell News on Six reporter Tess Monty, wastewater is likely to blame. Sager Creek here is a four and a half mile stream. It's part of the Illinois River watershed, and it was in this water that Oklahoma fisheries biologists say they found at least 10,000 dead fish. The slow flowing water on Sager Creek makes it a swimming hole anyone would want to try. It's absolutely beautiful. Uh, the water's clear, you can see to the bottom, um, you can see the fish swimming around you. Chandra Stewart and her sister Kimberly Strether live along the creek and swim it often, but the last time they took their families for a swim, something was off. There was like a lot of dead fish down there, and I was like, oh, no, I don't want to swim here. Let's go to the swimming hall, the other swimming hall. So we went, like, right down here. A landowner reported the problem to the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife last week. These pictures show just a few of the thousands of dead fish fisheries biologist Curtis Tackett says his team found. They took water samples, then collected and sorted the fish. They were all small, mad tops, minnows, sunfish, and smallmouth bass, to name a few, but all still vital to the environment. They're very important. They're important to the whole ecosystem. Tackett says the kill was pollution-related and that it appears partially treated sewage had been dumped in the water. He says that caused dissolved oxygen levels to drop and kill the fish. It's going to probably kill the entire reach of the stream. 
Since the case is under investigation, Tackett can't say where the sewage came from, but says it was from a larger source. This news comes to us from Brazil. As you can see, thousands of cattle presumed dead in Brazil boat accident. But a thousand cattle is a lot of cattle. Once again, back in the USA, on October the 7th of 2015, thousands of dead fish wash up along Bryant Beach in Freeport. Oh, that's right, Bill. This is taking place just down the road at Bryant Beach. And just be glad you can't smell it through your television. The fish kill was discovered this afternoon, and some of the locals say it's the worst they've seen in several years. As the waves wash ashore Freeport's Bryan Beach, so do the fish. Thousands and thousands of bait fish known as shad. They litter the shore from the mouth of the Brazos River and stretch several hundred yards east. The city's assistant manager made the discovery during a routine check Wednesday afternoon. As I made my way down there, um, you know, I, could, I could tell there was a, an abundant smell as well. And, um, and the sheer amount when I got there was very it was shocking. They're waiting on the state to determine the exact cause. Right now, the city and seasoned fishermen suspect red tide, a natural phenomenon that produces a high level of algae that can lower oxygen levels and add toxins to the water. Lots of dead fish. I mean, hardly any bait in the water. Fish are a few and far between. The fishing ain't no good right now. The water isn't dangerous for humans, but the city is urging people to stay away for now. That includes fishermen who are concerned because Wednesday they started noticing larger game fish like flounder and trout washing up as well. They say it could take months to rebuild a suitable level of fish. A year and a half, two years, man, if this keeps up this bad, because all the game fish washed in, the population's going to have to build back up right here. If it keeps up, it's going to get worse and worse. Start killing everything. Now, the city can only shut down the beach in a state of emergency. This obviously doesn't rise to that level, but again, they are asking people to stay away, at least for now. Well, there you have it. Now you know why I talked about the heat from the sun and El Nino that is warming up the oceans. But once again, I just want to give the red flag for you so that you understand these aren't the last reports that you're going to witness because there's a lot more coming. The birth pangs are getting more intense. You'll see the mysteries. You'll see the officials being baffled report after report but it isn't baffling to the people who know jesus christ these things we are expecting to see and to see even worse so get prepared i'll give you the lowdown as soon as they come up and i'll do the best i can to show you that the words of our lord and our savior jesus christ he's doing this to show you that he is in charge and that he is coming back and he wants to come back for you. But you need to get yourself ready because if you're not ready, when he comes back, you're going to wish that you were.